Okay, so in this video, we're going to discuss antibiotic resistance. So let's get started. So first of all, you know, what are antibiotics? Well, they're medicines. They are medicines that are used to fight bacteria infections. In the late 1920s, Alexander Fleming discovered the very first antibiotic known as penicillin. And when penicillin went into mass production, it was wonderful. It was curing diseases, bacteria diseases, that previously were uncurable. And not long after, World War II began, and wounded soldiers who in previous, previous wars may have died from battlefield infections were being treated with penicillin, and they were surviving and they were coming home. And so penicillin and, uh, and later antibiotics were looked on as miraculous. Well, antibiotics sound wonderful, so what's the problem? Well, the problem is now we understand antibiotic resistance. When bacteria possess genetic variations that allow them to survive the use of an antibiotic. In the picture, the bacteria on the left is resistant to an antibiotic. It multiplies, and its offspring multiplies, and over time, an entire population of bacteria are resistant to an antibiotic, and it's really hard to treat and cure this person. And so pretend here are bacteria that you are infected with. Now the letters just uh, correspond to various genes that they possess in their DNA. Bacteria are living organisms and they have DNA and genes. And so one gene I want to note is gene A. The bacteria that have gene A are going to be resistant to the antibiotic we're going to use to treat this person in a moment. So here we have the person taking their antibiotic. They went to the doctor, they got a prescription, and now they're taking their antibiotic. And the antibiotic will absorb into the bacteria cells. Well, let's zoom on into this bacteria cell that I've highlighted. And because this bacteria cell did not have gene A, little holes were popped in the cell membrane and it died. The bacteria died, and that's wonderful. We're a step closer to recovery. So how do antibiotics kill bacteria? Well, as you just saw, one or some type of antibiotics will actually interfere with the creation of the cell wall of the bacteria, and the bacteria will die. Other antibiotics will interfere with their ribosomes of the bacteria, and it prevents the bacteria from creating needed proteins, and so therefore the bacteria die. And other antibiotics will actually break apart the DNA of the bacteria, thus causing the bacteria to die. So when we come back to our infected person, notice how the cells without the letter A have all died. Now what about the two cells remaining? Let's zoom on in for a closer look at this cell right here. And when we do, here we see its DNA, and earlier we saw that this cell survived because it had gene A. A gene is a segment of DNA. And in this case, let's pretend that gene A allows the bacteria to produce a transport protein. So when the antibiotic is absorbed into the bacterium, the transport protein lives up to its name and transports the antibiotic right out therefore never allowing the antibiotic time to kill the bacteria. This bacteria is antibiotic resistant. Well, another way that some bacteria can survive in the presence of an antibiotic, again, let's pretend it has gene A, is that gene might allow the bacteria to produce enzymes. Now, I've, I've animated the enzyme as a pair of scissors here, and you can imagine that when the bacteria absorbs the antibiotic, the enzymes will break down the antibiotic, thus allowing the bacteria to survive. This bacteria is antibiotic resistant. And so when we come back to the two surviving bacteria, well, bacteria also multiply very rapidly, and bacteria reproduce asexually. So when they multiply, they just copy themselves. So notice how their offspring are exact duplicates. The offspring also possess gene A, which will allow them to survive in the presence of the antibiotic. So maybe, uh, you know, a day later, you're taking the antibiotic again, you're taking your next dose of antibiotic, 
As time goes by, however, notice the only surviving bacteria all possess gene A. So these bacteria are able to tolerate uh, the, the antibiotic that you are taking to hopefully get you better. So what is causing antibiotic resistance? You know, the reason for the picture of Charles Darwin is antibiotic resistance is a great example of natural selection the process where organisms with advantageous traits are more likely to survive and reproduce. Now, Darwin didn't understand anything about antibiotic resistance because antibiotics weren't even discovered until the 1920s. But antibiotic resistance is a great example of the process outlined by Darwin. It's the survival of the fittest. The fit bacteria survive and produce similar offspring. Those without the resistance over time have all died. So in this picture, we can actually judge which antibiotics you can use to cure somebody and which you cannot. And now this is what I want to discuss is how do we read the, the results of this picture? Which antibiotic should be prescribed to this sick person? Well, let's go ahead and, and examine this. So here is a Petri dish, and what we're doing is we're spreading bacteria that we've collected from a sick person. We're spreading the bacteria all over the Petri dish, and the bacteria will be given the opportunity to, to grow all over this Petri dish. And what we're going to do next is we're going to soak these little white cotton discs, each of them in a different kind of antibiotic. Notice number one has been soaked in penicillin, number two has been soaked in tetracycline, number three has been soaked in amoxicillin. These are three different kinds of antibiotics. I want to learn which antibiotic I can use to treat this person. So next, again, we have our petri dish that we've just spread bacteria all over. We're now going to add those cotton discs that have been treated with antibiotic 1, antibiotic 2, antibiotic 3. And now we're going to allow bacteria time to grow. You know, let's look at the petri dish from above, and now we're going to allow bacteria time to grow, and over time we're going to start to see bacteria growing all over this petri dish because we spread the bacteria all over the petri dish. But how do we know which antibiotics are working? Well, let's look at the results. Notice the area surrounding antibiotic number two. There's no bacteria growing. This tells me antibiotic number two is working. The bacteria are being killed in the area directly surrounding antibiotic number two. Same for antibiotic number three. There's no bacteria growing in the vicinity of antibiotic number three. This tells me it's working. The antibiotics are killing the bacteria in the vicinity. This area is known as the zone of inhibition, by the way. Notice antibiotic number one looks different, however. In, around antibiotic number one, there are still bacteria growing. This tells me antibiotic number one is not working. It's not working because the bacteria are resistant to antibiotic number one. So if this were an actual example, then we could prescribe antibiotic number two or antibiotic number three to help treat this person and end their bacteria infection. So here's an actual picture. Notice there are nine different cotton discs here and each of them has been soaked and treated with a different antibiotic. So the bacteria covering this petri dish is resistant to how many of the nine tested antibiotics. Pause the video if you want time to think about it. I'm going to go over the answer in three, two, one. So in this picture, I can see that the bacteria are resistant to one, two, three different kinds of antibiotics. This is a great example of a multi-drug resistant bacteria infection. This is one bacteria infection resistant to three different kinds of antibiotics. So what can we all do to help lessen the rate of antibiotic resistance? Well, one of the more important things we can do is to use antibiotics under the care of a doctor. Antibiotics are great for treating bacterial infections, but 
they have no impact on viral infections. So just because you're coughing and, and you have an infection does not mean you need an antibiotic. See your doctor and they can uh, prescribe the best course of treatment. Also, properly using antibiotics. You know, big day tomorrow, I can't get sick. I'll take some antibiotics, even though I feel fine. This is a, a real big way to misuse antibiotics, to just grab leftover antibiotics that you might have laying around in your medicine cabinet at home. Only take antibiotics when needed and as prescribed by a doctor. And when you do require the use of an antibiotic, make sure you finish your prescribed dose. If you're requ required to take your antibiotics for three weeks, but after a week and a half you feel fine and you feel better, that doesn't mean stop. Keep taking the last few days of your prescription so you can be sure of killing any last remaining pockets of the bacteria that might have been infecting you. And another way we can help to slow the spread of antibiotic resistance is to support organic farming. You know, a lot of antibiotics are used in livestock. So by supporting organic farming, you're supporting farming without the use of antibiotics and pesticides and fertilizers and a whole bunch of unnatural chemicals. And so there you have antibiotic resistance. I want to just uh, leave this picture up here until the very end of the video. So pause if you'd like to review six smart facts about antibiotic use. So thanks for watching and please place your comments in the box below.